Hello everybody. In this episode, we are going to be talking about backflows and backflow prevention. Now, what is a backflow? Well, a backflow, it's a device, a mechanical device that does just that. It prevents water from flowing back. Uh, is to protect your potable water system or your drinking water. You don't want any kind of contamination to get into that drinking water system that could contaminate it, such as like an irrigation system. Uh, irrigation systems, those uh, sprinkler heads, there's no valves in there. Those are pretty much open to the atmosphere. Uh, fertilizer from your yard or dog poop or anything like that could essentially flow into those heads and contaminate that system. Now it's fine for that because it's just for your grass, but you don't want that dirty water that's been sitting in those pipes for who knows how long getting into your house and contaminating the water that you're going to cook with, you're going to clean with, uh, and you're going to drink it too. So there's a lot of different backflows out there and it depends on the severity of the contamination that's in that line as to what backflow device you might use. Uh, some of them are really simple, no moving parts at all. Uh, some of them are like an anti-siphon thing that only has one type of what they call a check in it. Um, some of them have two uh, and are non-testable. And then there's some of the larger ones that uh, also have two different chambers Two different checks and um, they are testable. These are for your highly contaminated systems and then there's some even above that that uh, I don't have because we don't use in residential. But um, some of the applications and places you're going to see backflows. Uh, you have to have them um, uh, when dealing with a swimming pool. You don't want to be drinking the water out of the swimming pool. Who knows how nasty that is. Uh, salons and spas and things like that where you're dealing with hair dyes and bleaches and uh, makeup uh, whatever you don't want that stuff coming back into your drinking system uh, funeral parlors uh, there's all kinds of different embalming fluids and stuff you definitely don't want to be drinking that because if that stuff does get into your potable water system it could contaminate the whole system you know not just your house but your whole neighborhood. So it's very important. Um, restaurants have to have them. Uh, anytime you're dealing with chemicals, uh, back in the day, uh, photography, if you were developing photos, you had to have them because of all the developer fluids and stuff. Of course, that's pretty much gone nowadays, but that is still on the books and is still a requirement. Uh, anytime you're dealing with some really harsh chemicals or acids or something like that, uh, I know x-ray machines uh, still have developer fluids and things like that and you'll see them uh, when dealing with those. Um, now I am DHEC certified to test these things, to install these things, uh, and basically to inspect them. Uh, but what we're going to do next, I'm going to bring the camera in close. I'm going to got a couple devices here that we use in residential, uh, and we're going to go over them real quick. All right, so here we are. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about, and this one's real simple. Now, you can make these things. You don't have to use this one, uh, but this is called an air gap. Uh, basically, you're going to use this, say, uh, like a little uh, ice maker, just a by itself ice maker machine that's got a drain on it with a pump. They do require uh, that drain hose is not tied directly into your sewer. Uh, so you have to have some type of air gap. Now this is going to thread into your drain and then that drain hose or whatever is going to slip into the top and then lock down with this screw. So uh, what this does is if your sewer was ever to back up, it's going to flow out these holes, these slots here. Uh, the water will come out of that and it's not going to pressurize itself up into your drain hose for whatever you're trying to protect. Now these can also be used in the other direction when using uh, for potable water. You see them a lot of time uh, on farms where they have those um, 
like uh, it's a big water hose thing that stands up by itself to fill those pump trucks, those irrigation trucks and stuff. And it's so the top of that tank, there's no way for it to come in contact with the actual spout there. So this is called an air gap. And like I said, you can make these uh, just by supporting the pipe above another pipe. This is real simple. This is a passive one. There's no mechanical stuff here, nothing to wear out. This thing will last uh, forever. Uh, so that's the first one, real easy. The next one you're going to see a lot of. And this one is called an anti-siphon or a vacuum breaker. Uh, these are used on your hose bibs. You see them a lot on hose bibs. And they just screw on there. And it has uh, a little plunger assembly in here on a spring. And if the water tries to come back, down your hose, it's going to squirt out these little hose holes here. Um, the purpose of this and the way it was explained to me a long time ago was, say you've got a five gallon bucket sitting there and you got your hose in it and it's got some toxic waste in that five gallon bucket and somebody comes along, my analogy again, runs over that fire hydrant out, out in the road and all of a sudden you lose water pressure and it starts to backflow. Uh, you don't want that hose to suck whatever toxic waste you've got in that five gallon bucket back down the line and into your house and contaminate your system. So that's what these are used for. It's called a vacuum breaker, um, but it is a type of backflow device for your hose hoses. Uh, the next one I've got here, they call this a dual check. Um, and this is the non-testable type. Uh, a lot of times we're required to put these on water meters and stuff. Um, but it's non-testable and I will show you how this one works. It comes apart, it's got a union here. Sometimes that union's really helpful when you're trying to tie in a water line real close in a ditch. Um, it's pretty simple, not a whole lot of parts, but inside of here, it's got two checks. That's why it's called a dual check. And these are basically just little trap doors here on a spring that uh, would open and then of course they're going to close going in the other direction. Now if you ever take these apart, there's an arrow here, you got to remember to put them back in the right way. You want them to go in where that door will open. Uh, if it doesn't open, you put it in the other way, this will not work, you're not going to get any water, you're going to get a phone call later on, somebody doesn't have water. And we don't want that to happen. But this one is really, really simple uh, backflow device. Non-testable, you bury this one, you forget about it. Uh, a lot of times they tell you, you need to replace these over the years, but there's not really anybody coming around to check on these guys. All right, the last one we got here, and the big one. Uh, this is about the biggest one uh, you're gonna see in residential. This is your testable uh, double check assembly. It's not a dual check, it's a double check assembly. This one comes with two ball valves. Some of the older ones had gate valves on them, but these are ball valves, resilient seat ball valves. And you have two of them, it's got a little water in it. Um, so you can isolate this, so you can take it apart. Uh, and this one is testable through these ports. And we might do that later. Uh, but this one, if you ever have to work on it, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and show you what's in here. Uh, some of them have two bolts like this. This is the Watts 007 model. Very similar. Uh, all the 007s are very similar. Um, there's all kinds of different ones out there. But basically, uh, they made it real easy on you nowadays. It's like a cartridge in here. You take that cap off, there's an O-ring. Don't lose your O-ring, you'll need that later. Uh, they have changed this stuff over the years. It used to be one solid cartridge that drop, dropped in there, but now it's, it's two small ones that are the same uh, cartridge and they put this spacer in here because the body of the 007 hasn't changed over the years, just the guts inside of it. It's pretty neat. Uh, but you're gonna pull this cage out like so. And then to get in here, you need a little screwdriver. And you can get on this little thing here and kind of pop it. Uh, sometimes they're held in with their little O-ring. Now, you can't just pull it straight out. You gotta kind of twist it and get it out. But that's 
your check there. It's on a spring. It's a little gate thing that goes back and forth. And here, again, if water tries to go backwards, it slams shut. But generally, it's going to be floating back and forth um, with the water running through it. Now, this is directional, too. It goes back in a certain way. That's your, uh, actually, that's your second check because of the way it goes through. These are, like I said, double check. There's two checks in here. And here again, there's another one here. You got to twist it sideways to get it out. And it is the same exact check. Remember, you got to put them back in right or it won't work. So they go right back in there. Sometimes in construction, you're going to be taking these things apart because they'll get sand and stuff in them. And with these, you've got to make sure they go back in those holes all the way or you won't be able to get your little cage back in there. But that's pretty much it. They like to make a little pooty noise when you put them back together because uh, those valves are opening and closing on you. But that's it. You slide your cage back in. You put your O-ring back down in here. And this one actually does have a little piece of dirt in it. But if you get a piece of dirt in there, it'll hold those checks open and it will uh, fail on the test. But that is pretty much it and you put it back together.